Coming up, we sat down with UI President Bruce Harold to talk with him about Taj Bond Wilson's resignation back in August. And later, we meet the city council candidates. Today in sports, we have an in-depth look at Iowa football's defense. And rainy conditions put a damper on Iowa women's soccer. More for you in just a few. Good morning and happy Tuesday, Hawkeyes. Today is going to be a cloudy and rainy day. I'll tell you more about the weather for today and for the rest of the week coming up. All that and more coming up on this Tuesday morning edition of DITV News. Don't go anywhere. We start right now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. I'm Lauren Varell. In August, Associative Vice President for Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, Tajwan Wilson, resigned from his role, but there are more details coming out about his final months in the position. Wilson is working with the Vice President of External Relations to help the university become a more inclusive, equitable campus. Here's what the university president, Bruce Harold, had to say on what the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Initiative future looks like without Wilson knew that as well. Wilson's contract says that his term will be up by January of 2020. The university has not begun a search for his replacement. Downtown restaurant Oasis Falafel is celebrating 15 years in their Iowa City location. To promote their anniversary, o Oasis is giving back to the community by embarking on the first 15, a 15-day fundraiser for the 15 or Iowa City organizations. Co-owner Naftali Stramer describes their inspiration, saying, quote, 15 years ago, nobody gave us a chance, and now we are here, a very good business and a very proud, and we're very proud of it. So, for our celebration, we wanted to do something unique. My business partner came up with the idea, why don't we do something to help the community who has given us so much, end quote. Starting October 1st through the 15th, Oasis will team up with Emma Goldman, the Emma Goldman Clinic, Dance Marathon, Riverside Theater, and more. Each organization will receive 15% of Oasis sales on their designated days. So don't miss your opportunity to binge hummus and falafel while supporting Iowa City organizations. Well, that sure sounds like a super fun uh, activity. They're also, I'm going to go ahead and toss it over to Kate in the weather studio with more on the weather this week. Good morning and happy October 1st. Starting the month off, weather for today is looking pretty gloomy and rainy. This morning, temperatures will be in the mid to high 70s with scattered showers to be expected. In the afternoon, temperatures will be in the lower 80s and scattered showers will stop around 12 o'clock with a short break of cloudy skies until about 4 when scattered showers will begin again and will continue for the rest of the evening. As we look to the rest of the week, scattered showers will continue into Wednesday and there will be a significant drop in temperature tomorrow, really getting us into some fall-like cold. We get a quick break from the rain Thursday and Friday where there will be cloudy skies and temperatures will be in the low 50s. On Saturday, rain is to be expected all day with temperatures in the mid to low 50s. This week, we will experience some real weather changes from the hot and humid weather we have been experiencing. Have a great day and make sure to grab an umbrella. The Iowa City City Council election is coming up on November 5th. There are four seats up for grabs this year, and ex-US ex diplomat Janice Weiner hopes to snag one for herself. Weiner gradu graduated from both Princeton University and Stanford Law School. Here's what she had to say about her time as diplomat. There's a certain advantage in having grown up here, having gone away for many years, and then coming back and seeing the community with fresh eyes, um, and having lived in a number of places and seeing things that work and don't work in cities and, in, and, and things in countries as well, is really advantageous. More and more University of Iowa students are bringing their cars to campus, meaning that the parking space in the Hawk lot is decreasing. According to the Department of Parking and Transportation, the amount of student parking passes administered has reached its, its, high its highest in five years. 
April Wells, the, the UI Department of Parking and Transportation Communications Manager, commented on this issue saying, quote, this isn't a trend we like to see. We like to see people use alternative options like biking, carpooling, and public transportation because we have an amazing CAN bus public transportation with, with, CAM, with CAN bus, end quote. The lack of parking space has caused students to park their vehicles on unauthorized spaces, such as the grass rugby field. After two weeks of email warnings, the University of Iowa Department of, Pub of Parking and Transportation issued 15 citations to the cars parked on the rugby field. Students who received a parking citation can present their case to, student, to the Student Appeals Committee. The department added that several students have canceled their parking passes, opening up 34 parking spaces. Well, there's not only a parking issue during the park during the regular school year, there's also a ch quite the challenge during Hawkeye football to find parking. Speaking of football, I'm going to go ahead and toss it over to Hawk to our sports studio with more. That's right. And while Iowa's offense had a record day on Saturday, the defense had a complete game as well. A DITV sports reporter Zach Lohman has more on Iowa's strong D. The Hawkeye defense was able to pressure quarterback Asher O'Hare throughout the entire game on Saturday making him uncomfortable in the pocket and sacking him two times. For Iowa to keep MTSU's offense to only three points, it's something the Hawks want to do to every team they face. We don't like giving up points, not even three points. So um, if we can do that better, then you know we'll have a better game. But uh, overall, I feel like as a defensive unit, we did pretty good. Middle Tennessee's offense came in averaging over 400 yards per game, but Iowa's defense was able to hold them to just over 200. Oh, well, Coach Ferentz said that on paper, we're predicted to win this game. Um, but we knew that they were a good program and we were going to respect them and come out and play hard. Um, and they, they played us hard, but um, I think that our schemes are actually uh, did really well offensively and defensively, and uh, we were able just to take advantage of some things. With Michigan's defense allowing Middle Tennessee's offense to score 21 points, Iowa fans should be optimistic as they head into Ann Arbor to take on the Wolverines this weekend. Reporting from Kinnick Stadium, Zach Lohman, DI TV Sports. Even with all the injuries the defense is facing, they're fourth in the country in scoring defense, allowing just under nine points per game. Also on Saturday, Iowa Swim and Dive held their annual inner squad meet at the CRWC. It was a chance for people to come out and see the squad before their season starts. And Iowa beat Iowa 109-83. to A big Power 5 win for this Hawkeye team. And you can catch swimming and diving in their real Big Ten opener against Michigan State on Thursday at the CRWC. Jumping out of the pool and onto the pitch, Iowa soccer lost a rainy fight against Northwestern on Sunday. Iowa fell short even after outshooting the Wildcats 25-5 and bringing the matchup into overtime. With tired players and wet conditions, the Hawkeyes couldn't hold on, losing to Northwestern 2-1. Here's what the players had to say about their loss. Slow start. Like, it's golden goal, and we just, I don't know, it didn't come out what that mentality today. Got to be better next week. You know, I think uh, this is the second second Sunday in a row where we've uh, not played well, um, and we've been slow starting, and <clears throat> and we gave, gave up a set piece goal. So that's just uh, that's something that we've got to coach better, and, and uh, their mentality has got to be better as well. I mean, we had more than enough players on that the back post to seem like to clear that ball, and maybe they got into each other's way. I'm not sure, but. Uh, we had enough chances to win the game today, and uh, we didn't. And when you you don't do you don't score and gain control, and then other you know you leave it up in, to the other team to to uh, to finish some chances on set pieces, and they did. I think it's just important that we realize that mistakes will happen, and that's I mean our season's long, even though it's short. There's so many games, and that we can't let it get us down. But we need to learn from that, and to just change our mindset on those defensive set pieces, or work harder to not give up them. Iowa will try to seek redemption on Thursday when they take on Nebraska at the Hawkeye Soccer Complex. But that's all we have for you in sports today. Check back tomorrow to see what Iowa football players think about their game against Michigan on Saturday. Lauren, back to you. That's all we have for you on this Tuesday morning edition of DITV News. Be sure to head over to dailyiowan.com for all your latest news between Monday and Friday. If that isn't enough of the Daily Iowan for you, be sure to check out the print edition of the news on Stands Now. For DITV, I'm Lauren Burrell. Have a great day, Iowa City.